Good afternoon and welcome to the very first inaugural launch of Traders Workshop. It is March 10th. My name is Jim Cagnino with Ninja Trader. Uh, welcome. Great guest today. Great show today. Thank you for everybody uh, coming. Sharsu gets a special shout out. First one to chime in today. Appreciate you being here. Before we go any further, though, remember, trading futures, options on futures involve substantial risk of loss, not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although that could be an equation for opportunity, which I think is why we're all here, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful. Only fund your future trading account with risk capital. My personal definition, money I can afford to lose, doesn't change my lifestyle doesn't lengthen my retirement horizon and doesn't really overly stress me out. Stress is important. We make bad decisions when we're under stress. Be patient. Easy on the day trade margins. And none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Appreciate everybody for being here today. Type in your questions as we go. And I'm going to introduce our very special <laughs> guest today. We have Patrick Mullen from Gorilla Futures. Welcome, Patrick. Good to see you. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me on. Super excited to kind of kick this new uh, new series off here. It should be good to go. Well, thanks for being brave enough to be the first one. We're, li <laughs> we're literally, you're, we're breaking out of the box here. I know uh, you're going to be, uh, we're going to see you regularly, hopeful, hopefully. Yeah. Um, we talked about, you know, I ideas of your areas of specialty and things that you're really keen about and uh, really passionate about, including tick charts, which is the title of today's event. We got journaling trades is, an, is another one, price action, trends, drawing trend lines, all of this stuff, uh, really good stuff today. But we're going to focus on tick charts more or less today and really, really appreciate you being here. So hey, so let's get started. Where are, you, yeah. where, are you, where are you from? Where are you located? So I'm currently located in kind of central Ohio, uh, kind of born and, born and raised here in central Ohio for the most part. Hopefully here in the next few years, going to be making that trek down south a little bit to Florida, get rid of those weather, get rid of the winter and thing like that. I, I hear you. A hearty Midwesterner, just yeah. like me. And I, I'm ahead of you a couple of years. I'm a lot older than you, but I kind of already <laughs> made the trek down south. <laughs> Couldn't shovel bit. snow anymore in Chicago, but you could, we're going to welcome you with open arms when you do make that trip. Yeah. Looking forward, looking forward to that for sure. Yeah. So uh, again, your, your website, uh, gorillafutures.com, and we'll show, we'll show that off a little bit later. Um, yeah. Today, we really want to focus on, uh, we want to pick your brain. We got to get into your knowledge base. You know, you have a real special look at the way you uh, uh, look at the markets and your trading technique. And that's really why we're here. Uh, but before we just jump that, that jump, jump, jump that fence and get in there, um, tell us a little bit about your history. How did you get into trading to begin with? Yeah. So uh, honestly, it's a little little dark to start out with, but I got into kind of the whole trading realm after a, a, a relative passed away and I was gifted a, a, a few stocks. And it was just kind of one of those things, checking tickers and stuff like that. Uh, started out trading uh, penny stocks there for a little while. And if I'm being honest, I just wasn't a fan of constantly having to do research. It's just it's just too much to have to do every morning and stuff like that. So switched to trade in Forex there for a while. And I honestly love trading Forex. Uh, the thing that I didn't like with Forex is uh, I was always kind of seemed like I was waking up at two or three in the morning, checking out the London session, stuff like that. And I don't know about you, but I like to sleep in and sleep in for two, three, four hours and then waking up and checking some of my swing trades uh, just wasn't, wasn't worth it in the long run. So I found futures. I've uh, been a big, big S&P fan. I'm a big micro fan. I uh, love the micros, love the the minis as well. Uh, just pretty much been set on the S&P products since then. Been trading futures now for about six, yeah, six and a half years or so. Uh, and, and absolutely love it. Don't plan on changing anytime soon. Gotcha. That, so you've covered a lot of different types of markets, it sounds like, in your career so far. Um, you know, I, I'm just as a side note, advantage goes to futures here for currency trading pairs instead of over the counter. I'm a big fan. And not only that, Japanese yen, U.S. dollar cross, you could ha eat, be eating your dessert at dinner time and be OK yeah. there as opposed to the euro. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I was a big fan of the, the pound and things like that. But at the end of the day, I was tired of listening to news events happen at early in the morning and stuff. So now I kind of focus on futures, 
real kind of intraday scalp type uh, trading. And that's, that's just kind of fits my style. And I'm a big believer in you kind of need to marry up your style with kind of your personality because they can kind of conflict sometimes and you can run into some issues. Yeah. And you're going to resonate with a lot of our, a lot of, a lot of the folks here listening today, for sure. Uh, another reason why uh, we definitely needed to have you on. Um, is there any, was there any like personality or anything that you discovered when you were younger? Like, Oh, I want to be like that guy or um, this, well, this uh, mentor is interesting. Uh, mentor wise. I've never really been like, I wouldn't say there's one person. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Mike over at SMB, uh, FT 71. Those those two guys, when I first got into futures, definitely followed them. Still follow them to a certain degree today, not as much as I used to. Uh, but if I'm being honest, I originally got into trading just like everybody else. Wanted to see if I could make some money. It was interesting to be able to watch charts and stuff all day. And it's just kind of one of those things that just clicked with my personality to say. Uh, and so far, it's been a good fit. Knock on wood, hopefully it continues. <laughs> Awesome. So, you know, we do a, I do a morning kind of broadcast every yeah. morning and we look for trade ideas and I use a 10 minute candle chart. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm kind of old school. Maybe I'm yeah. a dinosaur. I'm a little slow, but we do have a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks that ask about tick charts yeah. and, you know, something a little bit different than the regular time series analysis we do. And, um, and I think that's one of your, one of your strengths, right? Is the tick charts. Yeah. So when I first got into trading, I was all about the time-based chart. Uh, I Coming from Forex, I mainly focused on the four-hour chart and the daily chart. Big swing trader. Um, I still would kind of consider myself a swing trade scalper. I know those kind of contradict each other. Um, but I like to use the tick chart mainly because it's more transaction-based. Um, my point of view is time doesn't move markets. Uh, time doesn't move price. Transactions do. Um, and after trading futures, I originally looked at the five minute. I think the five, 10, 15 were kind of the, the first charts I kind of transitioned to, but I felt like I was always getting in real late. I don't know how exactly how you trade and kind of your philosophy, um, but I seemed like I was always buying breakouts. And personally, I'm just not a big breakout fan. Um, I think it's kind of one of those 50 50. Sometimes they work amazing, and then sometimes they, don't work out too much. So I started kind of searching around, found tick charts. I gave volume base and range range charts their, uh, their time to see if it's something I liked. And then ultimately just ended up using a tick chart. <clears throat> I, I got it. I got it. And needless to say, Ninja Trader software is great at being able to customize your tick, tick chart levels. That is super, super, super quick, in my humble opinion. So we're yeah. definitely, everything is colliding. We're going into the right spot right here uh, with that as well. I personally am not, um, I, you know, I, I haven't spent a lot of time with them. And yeah. as a result, my skill level there is a little bit less, but it's very. we get a lot of questions about it. So uh, for sure, we're great, glad you're there. And you, you've already kind of mentioned the difference between time, time series analysis. Yeah. And the tick chart analysis, um, which is uh, super, super cool. So let's, um, if you got time, if you can, if we could take a look at your setup and kind of walk us through your thought process and yeah, how sure. you look at it. Let me get this over here on screen for us. So this is currently the chart that I was trading today. Um, I trade, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I do have to apologize in advance. Uh, but I do use a handful of different time frames when it comes to tick charts. Uh, my main time frame, at least for the past six months to a year, has been the thousand tick chart. It's a faster moving tick chart. Uh, and I'm always trying to kind of find that, that balance. I like a fast chart, but I don't want like NASDAQ fast, you know, NASDAQ, NQ, things like that. That's a little too fast for me. So for the time being, and this changes kind of based on the markets, uh, based on volatility and things like that. But I'm kind of stuck on the 1000 tick chart. Uh, hey, hey, Patrick, thing, if you could kind of explain, I'm sorry to interrupt. If you could explain to, to the viewers, what, what, you, what is a tick chart? Just basic 101, yeah. what is it as opposed to a candle? Yeah, 100%. So let's, let's kind of step back there for a second. Um, so when I say tick chart, what I'm really talking about is transactions. Tick charts are simply based on transactions. So in theory, a perfect world, 
uh, there are a thousand transactions going on right now with every bar. Um, in my point of view, that's what moves markets. You know, someone's buying, someone's selling. That's how we kind of see this price movement. And essentially, that's what a tick chart is. Now, just like a time chart, you can have a million different times. You know, you can go from one tick. I'm not sure exactly where Ninja Trader caps it out, but I look regularly at a 10,000 tick chart. So you can have some larger tick charts on there. And especially if you're kind of a swing trader, maybe that larger tick chart might kind of be something that falls in line with your type of trading. Um, and then obviously there's a big difference between tick and time. Time is time-based, tick, we're looking at transactions. Excellent, thank you for that. <clears throat> yeah, um, so going over my setup here, first of all, one of the things uh, that you might notice, I'm a big fan of trading with no colors on your candles. Uh, from my experience and then kind of kind of mentoring and coaching others, uh, sometimes those big green candles, those big red candles uh, can kind of mess with your mind. You say, oh, there's a big setup there. I got to jump in. Um, but that's another story for another day. So I use black candles. Uh, I use a simple 21 EMA. Um, the reason how, or I should say how I ended up with the 21 is simply trial and error. There's no secret sauce behind it. Uh, I know some individuals like to use uh, uh, fibs and things like that. I think that's fine. Again, it's one of those things. Just find what works best for you. So I've got a 21 on there. I do have my VWAP. Uh, I simply use just that single line on the VWAP. And then those indicators on here. And then I have a tick counter. This is uh, a part of our package, comes with our price action stuff. And then I have our labels here as well, just to kind of help me reference open, high, low, heat of the moment. It's a little easier to see than just looking at a line. Um, I would say, I don't know, probably half of this. You know, you don't need the open, high, low. You don't need the net change. You don't need the EMA because everything I do is pretty much based on price action. And indicators themselves um, are kind of more of a filter. I honestly wish that whoever named indicators indicators would have named them filters because I think that would be a much uh, better name there. But that's kind of my overall setup here. Uh, for those of you that maybe want to see some details on here, these are some of the indicators I've got set up on here. Nothing fancy, uh, pretty much using stock settings for every single one of these. Uh, this is our VWAP. You can see simply just using the single line. Uh, net change, nothing special there. Open, high, low, close. Again, nothing really special there. Labels and then a simple price line to help me see what's going on. Uh, so that's that's pretty much how I like to trade. Uh, very big fan of the KISS acronym. Keep it super simple. And I kind of like to apply that to my trading uh, as well. So that's kind of why I use those indicators on there. Now, would you have would you have uh, another type of chart, maybe on another screen that you glance at occasionally, or is that just kind of uh, uh, you know ruin your focus and you just kind of like to stick with this? Great question. So behind me, that's actually my trading setup. Um, on one screen, there is this chart right here. This would be our a thousand tick, and then on the other screen is what I kind of use as my reference. Uh, I look at the twenty five hundred tick, forty five hundred tick, hourly chart daily chart, weekly chart, and then I look at a 10,000 tick chart as well. Um, my kind of begin to go back into philosophy here is I want to stack the deck in my favor. So uh, I, we, I know we have some Gorilla Futures members in here, but in the morning we go over the weekly, daily, hourly, um, and then go over that 4,500 tick chart. And what I mean when I say stack it in my favor is if everyone's moving in one direction, why would I want to go against that? So throughout the day, uh, I'm a big fan of trend lines. So I'll draw my trend lines on all those charts. And I just simply try to go with the flow throughout the day. You know, I'm a big trend trader. Um, rarely will you catch me doing any uh, kind of counter trend unless it's a real big mean reversion setup. Uh, but other than that, go with the flow, stack them in my favor. And then, like I said, I just kind of reference them. Uh, throughout the day just so i have a good picture of what's going on so when you say stack in your favor right so you're talking about uh going with the trend yep. and not a fan of counter trend trading 
Is it easier to get that counter trend idea out of your head with tick charts versus a regular candle? Because I know it gets stuck in my head and I'm thinking it yeah. can't go down any lower. I want to buy it right now, which is not a good decision. So, so I would say yes and no to that. To that question so i want to reference our i got a five minute chart up here um in my eyes on this five minute chart just to kind of for those of you who are time-based fans is this is a little extended you know we've got our mean and again just to kind of step back when i say mean i am referencing my 21 ema uh and my bwap here uh so in my eyes this is a little extended away on our five minute chart starting to get a little choppy well, we can all agree that for the most part, price is moving down. Uh, I, I think that's something we can all agree on. But with this five minute chart, you're stuck in this chop. You know, there are some buy signals down here, but you're going counter trend. I'd much rather reference this tick chart. Hey, we just had a heck of 50 point sell off, something like that, 40 point sell off, and see if I can kind of pick up some of the scraps. And I can still go with that overall trend. My bias is definitely bearish. We're running into resistance up here uh, near the previous close. We definitely have resistance around, got to move our screen out, right around that 39.90 level. So I'm just looking for trades that still go in line with that. And then I don't have to have that kind of counter trend uh, philosophy or that counter trend idea pop in my head constantly. I can keep going with the trend. Got it. So pretty much you could, regular tech, it, again, we don't want, we're going to yeah. call them indicators because that's what everybody knows about. But um, you could use your regular indicators when you just look at, it looks like a candle chart, even though it's a tick chart. Yeah. And you could use your regular indicators if it, it resonates with you as well on this. Yeah. So uh, I, I know later in this program, we'll talk about signals a little bit more, uh, but kind of the signals and the philosophy that's applied to a tick-based chart can easily be applied to a time-based chart. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of price action. I don't think price action is kind of regulated to one time frame. Uh, I know lots of people are big fans of the five minute. Jim said he trades the 10, uh, and I'm sure maybe some of his philosophies and ideas are also applicable to time charts, it, excuse me, tick charts. And I know some of my tick chart philosophies are also applicable to time-based charts. That's a big fan. That's a reason why I'm a big fan of price action. I got it. All right. That's uh, that, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, my thing is volume profile. Okay. So. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously we deal a little bit with volume in here as well. I look at volume mainly in the morning uh, when, when I go into the session, I like to see um, roughly, you know, for our MES and ES products, I like to be up at least uh, over 150,000 uh, volume wise, because just kind of back testing, uh, it seems like that's kind of the, the volume number for me. But again, kind of a different story for a different day. <clears throat> I got it now. So right now we're looking at a micro E mini S and P. Um, do you tend to focus on one, one market or will you have your view showing several different. Yeah. Uh, so I mainly focus on the MES and ES. Um, I know some people probably disagree with this, but I think the MES moves slightly different than the ES. Um, I also think eventually the micros are going to overtake the minis, but different conversation for a different day. But I mainly focus on the MES and S&P products. Um, again, kind of going back to philosophy, uh, you can only kind of chase one chicken at a time, looking at a bunch of different uh, charts, different contracts. Um, at least from my experience, you kind of get a little, you get your wires crossed a little bit and it's easier just to focus on one kind of less is more uh, type of approach in my idea or my mind. Yeah. And, and so, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been lost a lot of times chasing too many markets at the same time. It's kind of hard to keep focused. Um, and from a, from a frequency point of view, though, based on your yeah. methodology, how frequently, you know, how many trades would you make in the morning as an example? So I normally trade the first 60 minutes. I like the volatility of the open. Uh, my goal each day is between one and five trades. Uh, again, less is more. Sometimes we can get tons. This morning I had six trades. I had three winners, three losers. Uh, came out on top by about six, five or six points. 
there. Uh, but again, really, it's one of those things, tick charts, and let's see, yeah, we're seeing my chart right now. Tick charts, we get so many different signals throughout the morning where I feel like I can be picky. You know, if something doesn't fit my rules exactly, then I'll just wait until something else comes along. So that's another reason why I'm a fan of tick charts. Uh, apply that kind of methodology to our time-based charts. <clears throat> Excuse me to our time-based charts, and in my eyes, again, everyone trades differently, in my eyes, I only see two signals here today. We've got one right here, what I like to call a three-point or a swing point, and then we got the same thing right here as well. So one, two, three up, one, one, two, four down right here, and that's pretty much the same signal. You know, so throughout the day, on the five-minute, I only see two, two entries, switch back to my tick base chart and there's tons we got a two candle here we got some two candles here you know a real big two candle right here and that's just within the past almost hour and a half you know going back to this morning if we want to go back and kind of cherry pick a few trades here let's see where do we open yeah, i'll this take back. this i'll take this opportunity to remind everybody past performance not indicative of future results yes uh, so just to kind of cherry pick a few trades here this morning obviously price is moving up nice run down we got what i like to call an exaggerated three point right here and let me kind of highlight this for you when you say three point two point explain that a little bit more yeah so when when i mean three point and a good visual that, that I tell kind of our members is look for a capital V and a capital A. So when price is moving down, let's just get a little hypothetical here. When price is moving down, we wanna look for that capital A. Price moves up, we see some sort of rejection to higher prices, and then we close down. So right there, that's my capital A. Something kind of like that. You know, that right there, and again, to kind of preface this, I'm a big pullback trader. Uh, you can call it a rally, you can call it a pullback. Almost 99% of my trades are always pullbacks. Why? I want to go with the trend. I let the trend establish itself. Once it establishes itself, then I look to jump in. I'm looking to just grab a chunk of that move. Uh, I will never catch the entire move. Uh, so if I can get a little chunk of that move, pair that up with one of these signals or entries, Again, uh, looking for that capital A right here, and that's what we got right here. Now, granted, to kind of go a little deeper into the signal aspect here, sometimes we have more than three points in a three-point turn. We're looking for that general market structure there. So we got our one up, we got, I'm not gonna count all these, but five or six consolidate, and then one down. You know, so we enter in right there, that also, ended up breaking our previous trend line and going along with the overall trend. So that's kind of what I look for throughout the day. I look to see if I can get that three or four times in the morning. Sometimes we do. And then I go on about my day. Uh, and again, big fan of tick charts because if we compare this, that's what, nine, 940. Let's go take a look at that five minute chart. Let's see, 940, we are right here. So technically you got a little double top right there. Uh, I don't think anyone will argue about that, but signal wise, uh, I don't see any signals here. Jim, is this something that you would take uh, double top wise? If you saw this right here, this big kind of rejection, is that something you would look at for your time-based chart or, or no? Well, yes, but so I, you know, I see the big wick on the top of that, uh, the yeah. first bar. Which would, which definitely is telling me sellers are coming in, but establishing a target up there. Then the very next bar, the opposite effect, right? Big wick on the bottom with the target down there. So in my mind, that kind of you, you put those two together, you almost get like a doji looking candle, a little bit of a market uncertainty. Yeah. And so I would be a, I would like kind of wait before I took a trade for the next candle uh, to tell us what the answer is. Yeah. Yeah, so, so similar idea there. And I did want to highlight on something Jim said right there when he said uncertainty. 
Um, one of the things that you heard me mention in the beginning is mean reversions and our mean. Uh, one of the reasons why I have this 21 on here, this 21 EMA, is one, it represents my mean. Two, it also kind of represents average and fair price. I don't want to overpay for anything. You know, so if price is way too cheap, I don't want to sell the bottom. You know, if price is way too high, I don't want to be buying up here. See how we're kind of extended away from our mean? And with tick charts, I feel like one, when we have these big mean reversion setups, I can get in a little easier. And two, they don't always take so long to kind of turn around. You know, if we look back at our five minute chart, we've had this big mean reversion. I'd call this a V play. Some of you that have been in the Discord channel will know we talk about these big V plays. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're real extended away from that 21 EMA. And notice how, let's see, it's going on 1230. Pretty much for the past hour and 15 minutes or so, we've been stuck just down here consolidating. Back to our tick chart. You can see we start to get more signals and we can take advantage of these little mean reversions that are happening overall in that bigger mean reversion and still kind of go with the overall trend. So just another reason why I'm a big fan of that tick chart um, going forward. So it kind of gives you a micro view, right? A view be yeah. behind the curtains within the time series chart. Yep, 100%. And I do want to kind of make, make this clear. These are normally very scalpy intraday trades. Um, my ideal trade is to be in and out in a few seconds. Uh, anything over 15 minutes is kind of too long for me. But if we just, let's just go back and take a look at, a random trade here. Nice two candle right here, right? Right at that 1030 mark. Uh, comes up here, technically lower high going down here. One thing we can't argue with is prices clearly on the decline. Nice two candle. And I set all my targets off of previous support and resistance areas. Uh, so nice two candle. And again, oops. Hit the wrong button there. There we go. Um, it's okay. Nice I do that on a regular basis every morning. <laughs> that F1 gets me every time I go to hit F2 for that trend line. Uh, but no, our two candle is essentially one candle up, one candle down. Ideally, that second candle is an, an engulfing candle. Very similar to this. Didn't breach the highs, but pretty close to an engulfing. So you get that two candle, you can shoot for that previous support, which would have been pretty much our New York session low at the time. And you're in and out within, let's see, that's 1033. You're pretty much out within seconds and you're looking at 28 down to 23. So hypothetically, you're looking at five to six points right there. Pair that up, you do that again down here, you do that again down here, and you just simply try to get in the trend. Um, and you, in and out within a few seconds, within a few minutes. Uh, I'm also a big kind of advocate to where I think with this type of trading, and I know some people will disagree with me with this, is time in the market is a little bit riskier than sitting out waiting for that perfect setup. I don't know exactly if you agree with that or not, Jim, but that's kind of how I look at uh, these intraday trades to say. Yeah, it's a constant challenge to know, you know, how long do I expect this trade to work in my favor? And at what point do I lose the odds of it working in my favor? And for sure, as time goes on, that's a problem. Exactly. Uh, and it's nice to be able to ride that momentum a little bit. You know, if price is plunging down real fast, then hopefully we can get kind of a, mo a momentum trade in there and capture some points while things are moving down real fast. Again, going with that overall trend. So a quick question from uh, Herbert asks, uh, do you ever use, do you ever trade using 5,000 ticks as a chart? Uh, I personally don't use the 5,000. Uh, the closest I use to the 5,000 is the 4,500 tick. Um, on our YouTube channel, Gorilla Futures, we've got tons of videos talking about the 4,500 tick. Um, and it's one of those that the 4,500 tick might be too fast for you and the 5,000 might be a sweet spot but remember, we're talking that this is all price action. It's not 
uh, based on any time frame. So everything should be applicable to all those time frames. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So I hope that answered your question uh, with with uh, time frames. And just to kind of highlight that a little bit more, uh, we do have a member in our Discord channel that is a big fan of the ten thousand tick. Uh, he does all of his analysis on the 10,000 tick, and he'll take kind of more swing-based trades off that 10,000 tick as well. Um, sometimes the 10,000 tick might be similar to a 30-minute chart, and sometimes it's a little more similar to maybe a 10 or 15-minute chart. It all just depends on how much we're moving in either direction. Got it. Got it. Could you, um, real quickly, we have a couple questions about uh, just your indicator setup. Could you show that again, the uh, indicators yeah. in particular? And we have a couple questions on it. I just wanted to show it. This is kind of the setup that um, Patrick has. And, and always exciting one is that net change display in the upper right. Everybody always asks about that. Yeah. Uh, again, it's kind of similar to the VWAP. And I guess I should explain how I use these just a little bit more. Uh, if there's some sort of uh, setup or settings that you want to see, by all means, uh, gladly show it to you. But I mainly use that net change indicator just to let me know what's going on with the overall market. Uh, if we're down, you know, like we are right now, eight tenths, I'm probably going to start to look for some more shorts with our VWAP. You know, if we, if you want to see some more, just let me know. I'll open it back up again. But if our VWAP is moving down like we are right now, it's probably safer to take some shorts until price starts to produce a higher high and a higher low, and then maybe I can get that counter trend trade up there. But until it does something like that, I'm just gonna try to ride the trend, ride the wave, like the old saying goes, trend is your friend. Okay, so that's interesting. That's a great point of view. So what you're saying is, hey, we have our regular you know, lagging indicators here going in a bearish direction. In addition, just by looking at that net change, that also is basically using as another is another indicator. Yeah. So kind of like I said in the beginning about stacking the deck when I was talking about time frames, I want to stack the deck with indicators. You know, like Jim said, all these indicators are lagging. Um, I hate the word indicator. I think it's more filter. But if all my filters are pointing to the downside, why would I start looking at the upside? of things why would i go counter trend and again that's just how my mind works some people will look at it and say hey we're down almost one percent great buying opportunity um but personally everything pointing down i'm going down got it okay that's good that's uh that's your that's serious trend following yeah yep big 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 trend fan right here awesome all right, so right now it's it's twelve thirty East Coast time. Um, is it? Would you still be looking for trades at this point in the day, or is it? Do you do you kind of subscribe to? Well, it's lunchtime. Everything's going to be a little wonky for an hour or two. Yeah, kind of mentality. Well, nine times out of ten, I'm done by about ten thirty. Um, I get an hour in. Normally, I can get a handful of trades in, unless we're trending really strong in one direction or the other. Uh, during COVID, I would trade five, six hours a day just because price was moving real fast. But lately, by about 10.30, 11 o'clock, I'm done. Uh, if I was to trade, I personally would wait until after uh, kind of one o'clock or so. And then it seems like the afternoon kind of slows down sometimes, not always, but after that lunch period uh, is how I like to look at things. I got it. Um, we, we, we thank you for that. We have uh, Gonzalo is, is asking a question. What do yeah. you think about a risk reward ratio? Question mark. Uh, why sometimes would one have a negative risk reward ratio? Okay, great question. Uh, and that's going to kind of be a two three parter. First of all, I am a big fan of one to one uh, intraday wise. I think one to one, at least for my personality and my trading uh, is great. Uh, I think if you can shoot for a one to two, one to three, then go for it. But let's just take a look at that trade up here that we talked about a moment ago. So hypothetically, if you get in at 28, I'd want my stop loss up here. Let's just call that, let's just call it 33. So you're looking at a five point stop. 28, I have support down here at 23, uh, actually 23 and a half. 
So you're looking at what, four and a half points there? Uh, five and a half, yeah, four and a half points there. I'm no mathematician, uh, but four and a half points there. So you're just just a little negative right there, you know, five to four and a half. But honestly, if I'm looking to see price drop down to that 23, I'm probably getting out at 24. I like that buffer there. I don't want to push the limit. So I would have a little bit of a negative risk reward. And this kind of takes us off topic a little bit, but I'm a huge fan of back testing. I go back and back test pretty much every month um, to see how these signals are doing. So I know that, hey, over the long run, this signal with a one-to-one -one or maybe a slightly negative risk reward is going to work out, you know, maybe 50% of the time, 60, 70, all depending on what my back testing does. And then I put that all together and then I am comfortable with a little bit of a negative risk reward. Uh, obviously, I don't want to be risking 200 points to grab 10 points. You know, we've got to be realistic here. But sometimes, especially intraday wise, I think a one-to-one -one or a negative risk reward is is kind of plausible, uh, and sometimes it's it's the way to go in my opinion. But make sure you back test that before you implement it into your trading, uh, so you kind of have a good idea how your signals and entries kind of fare going forward. I got it. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. So I, I like to look at literally. Um, so I try to figure out where support and resistance is. And yeah. you, I get that question every morning and every afternoon. It's like, hi, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to make, like you're saying, you're trying to make, uh, you know, five points and you're risking seven. Yeah. Um, that's a bad idea. It, but if, if the chart's telling you this is clearly where support is, and this is clearly where resistance is, maybe, maybe it's a good trade idea. I don't know. Oh, hundred percent. And I think, that with all the YouTube videos, all the media, everyone kind of has that one to three baked in their mind, which I think is awesome. You know, always, always look at that risk management and always try to kind of do the right thing. But at times it's just not reasonable to have that one to three, you know, I mean, what the majority of the time, the S and P is stuck in, I believe what a 20, 30 point range, obviously when we're not going through all this craziness. So if you're risking five points, you know, 15 points for a one to three might be out of the question. You know, it might take you half the day to get 15 points when we get back to a normal market environment. So go back and forth, back test, keep a detailed journal, uh, and hopefully you can kind of get the answer to that question. So you opened the door for me for a great question. Uh, you know, we're since Thanksgiving, in my opinion, and I've been doing this for a long time, we've we're the behavior of the stock index futures has been completely unique with respect to the average true range, average daily range, the yeah. size of the candles, the size of the wicks, all of this stuff is unique. So if you're new to futures trading, you're going to think it's normal, but it's really abnormal. And then eventually wow. things will settle down and go back to normal. Does your uh, technique or philosophy change in what I'm going to call a normal situation versus this uh, unique situation we're in now? Uh, I would say maybe 10% of it does. And the 10% that changes is uh, I kind of set my risk reward up where I'm going to be in trades for a little bit longer. Uh, the trades that I'm taking now are what I call momentum trades. I'm normally out in a few seconds, a few minutes. Uh, when things slow down, I kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, mentally prepare to be in trades for five, 10 minutes because things are slow. We get that kind of slow melt up or slow meltdown. But other than that, at the end of the day, price action is gonna be price action, whether it's a bullish market, bearish market, huge volatility, as long as price moves, uh, my rules pretty much stay the same for the most part. Got it, that is terrific. Um, so we're coming up, we have about five, six minutes left. I'm gonna encourage anybody, if I missed a question, uh, cut and paste them in, in right now. And I'm going to ask at this point, if, how do, how do folks find you? What, uh, gorillafutures.com is there, um, what should we know about you going forward? Yeah. So created Gorilla Futures about three years ago, uh, gorillafutures.com. We're on YouTube, Gorilla Futures as well. Uh, we've got tons and tons of videos on there. You can either reach out to us, uh, on YouTube, use the kind of contact page, uh, or form or the chat box on our website, www.gorillafutures.com. If you have any questions, anything like that, you're always more than welcome to reach out.
questions, comments, anything like that. <clears throat> um, uh, that that's awesome. And then whenever you're ready, you go ahead and show your, uh, I think uh, yeah. we have something to show the folks. So let me. That F1 got me again. So just a little, <laughs> it, like you said, it does it at least once a day, you know, hitting that F2 button. Um, but no, so we do have two main offerings here at Gorilla Futures. Uh, first of all is our price action trading course. Currently it's 26 chapters at about a chapter or two uh, every year, kind of gets updated. Uh, we don't charge you for the updates. There's no kind of sneaky subscription fees. We're kind of a one and done uh, type of company. Comes with trading journal, discord, all the indicators you saw on the screen today. Um, and weekly analysis and that uh, live morning stream that I talked about uh, in the beginning. We go over targets, levels, and stuff like that. That's included in that price action course. Next up is our one-on-one -on -one mentoring or coaching. It includes that price action course uh, and everything else I mentioned. And it also includes four additional one-on-one -on -one hour long sessions where we go over pretty much anything. Uh, not to call out one of our recent individuals having some issues with entry signals develop a plan for him implement that going forward and then we check in uh, as that's going so those are our two main um, offerings we still have our cinco de mayo sale going on uh, for about five or six more hours so if you want to take advantage of that by all means jump on to that uh, but yeah essentially we have our offerings very straightforward uh, and we're just simply here to see if we can help some individuals out that's awesome on your first on your first slide here you said consistent oh you have it right here Be become consistent what so let's talk about that real quickly because that yeah. that just brings all sorts of you know ideas to my head what, what do you mean by that so uh i think consistency one is defined by every person uh consistency in my eyes is being able to take the same trades whether they're winners or losers you know consistently following your rules your game plan routines and then hopefully that uh turns into winning trades then hopefully your trading career takes off after that but and i'm glad you brought that up and you're going to see consistent on our page lots of times i don't think you can be a trader if you're not consistent in all areas of trading and I also think that if you're not consistent in all areas of your life, then it's pretty hard to just be consistent in trading as well. So personally, just to kind of go off topic here, trading, I think not only can help you out kind of bottom line wise, no guarantees there, but I also think that it can help your overall life. You know, you're more consistent, you're uh, better at doing things. So I think there's lots of factors that trading can kind of help you out with. That kind of fall in that consistency realm of things. Hundred percent guarantee. I hundred percent agree with that. That's that's pretty awesome, uh, Patrick. We're getting toward the end here. Great. Really appreciate you taking the time yeah. today for starters and being here with us. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm and, glad I could be the guinea pig. Hopefully, we can do this again. No, I was. It, it was great. I mean, I I learned a lot, and you know, yeah. I I think it's important to continue to, to learn, see different points of views. Um, I think our viewers are going to say are going to say the same thing. So that was terrific, uh, and hopefully they'll reach out to you. I know that we have uh, we have a list of other topics to talk about in future yes. events, including journaling, price action, uh, trends, drawing trend lines. I'm, I, have, I could read this list on the side. It's it's about 15, 16 of them. We're really yeah. excited to get to those events as well uh, going forward. Yeah. Um, I, so I'm it, it, just uh, and also I just want to uh, thank everybody that's here today. Um, appreciate you hitting that thumbs up, that like button. If you like Patrick, that'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, appreciate you uh, being here. This will live on the YouTube channel if you wanna see it again uh, for a, a while. I'm not sure how long, but feel free to go ahead and, and, and view this going backwards if you want. So I uh, love your answer on uh, consistency. Awesome. Presentation was great, uh, Patrick. We are right at the end here and we look forward to uh, seeing you again. Yeah, no, I, I look forward to coming back. Uh, hopefully you guys got some information off this. Like I said a moment ago, you have any questions, you want to continue the conversation, reach out any of our platforms, website, YouTube, social media, 
Gorilla Futures on all of them and uh, gladly see if we can get you some help or kind of just continue talking about this. Outstanding. And I'll leave everybody with what I always leave them with. Please be safe out there. Be good to each other. Thank you for coming. Hey, thank you.